Welcome to another episode of A Closer Look on CATV8. I'm John Sanders, and I am the current president of Osher at Dartmouth, which is our uh, uh, excellent uh, lifelong learning program for uh, people who are able to attend our, our programs. We uh, model our programs after the Dartmouth uh, semesters, so we teach uh, a variety of classes on uh, a, a number of subjects uh, in each of four terms, uh, with the fall term being our busiest. This year we uh, estimate that we will have close to 100 courses uh, being offered to uh, our more than 1,600 members. Uh, this is the largest uh, curriculum that we've been able to field. Uh, the subjects range everywhere from international politics to history to music uh, to uh, the theater and film uh, programs uh, and are uh, much loved by everyone. Our flagship program, though, uh, is our summer lecture series, and I'm going to ask the uh, uh, our co-host to discuss it. <coughs> On my left is John Ferries, uh, who is uh, co-chair of the Summer Lecture Series. He is also president of Adventures in Learning uh, in New London. Uh, and Pete Blyler, uh, who is a past president of uh, the organization and also has co-chaired the Summer Lecture Series for quite a while. Uh, Pete, do you want to talk a bit about the uh, history? I'd be happy to. The Summer Lecture Series has now been going on for over 20 years. I think this is our 21st. And the uh, essence of it is a, a theme for the whole summer. But each week, we hold these weekly sessions uh, in the summer, usually six or seven weeks. And they run from 9 to 11.30. And there is a general theme. And it might be on the digital uh, revolution. It might be on. Uh, the perilous triangle of uh, Iraq and North Korea and Iran, or it could be on any number of, of topics. So John and I have now been uh, uh, co-chairing this series for three years. Uh, the first year we did it, we, uh, we had a theme of the medical uh, field and what's happening on the frontiers of, of medicine. Last year we had a, uh, we focused on global challenges confronting the United States. And this year we are looking at um, uh, our divided country and where can we find uh, solutions to the various, uh, various problems. Um, we offer a series uh, ticket, uh, which is less expensive than if you uh, purchase each one separately. They are $25 for a separate ticket and uh, $95 for the series for an OSHA member and $120 for a non-member. Uh, even though this is an OSHA program, anybody can attend the summer lecture series. You don't have to be a member to, uh, to attend. And I think maybe we ought to talk about the various speakers that we have this summer and the topics. And my cohort here, John Ferries, has been responsible for recruiting our speakers. So John, <laughs> why don't you talk about that? Well, we, we have a committee. And uh, Pete and I co-chair the committee. And it's made up of a good 15 people. Uh, and we act collaboratively. And we all sat down and submitted ideas for the theme for this coming summer which we do each year. It turned out that almost all of us that submitted that, those ideas were on to the same broad theme. And that is not looking out what's happening in China or the Middle East or Brexit or any of these other issues of importance, but they're foreign policy issues. What's happening in our own backyard? Uh, what are the issues that we're facing uh, daily that we have emotions about and we have conflicting emotions about as well? We realized we have a very provocative series coming up because the sessions that we're handling are provocative subjects. One is on racism. One is on immigration. One is on the inequality uh, within our country. One is on health care and the debate about the Affordable Care Act. Um, and one is on our democracy itself and whether or not 
that democracy is being wilted away a little bit by the partisanship that seems to be gripping our politicians and ourselves to some extent in our own neighborhoods. So in putting this together, we had two courses to go. One was to say, let's focus on one of those, like racism, and have all the sessions on racism, looking at it from different angles. But we felt there were so many issues that I just covered that were important that we wanted to uh, t talk about in each session a different issue that is dividing us and that we hope will start a conversation after the session in homes, in the community, that we hope we have, have ignited. So the, the, the actual series, we have a lot of mailing pieces. As you can see this one. And let me talk about a few of the speakers. The kickoff speaker is a professor of government at Harvard who has written a book, Why and How Democracies Die. And it's right in line with what we're facing in terms of political gridlock, um, with the fact that there's an incivility among the discussion about it, um, and also about some of the cheapening of our judicial system and our media, and, and really coming at, and he's an expert in analyzing democracies. The second session is, a, is on racism, and we have a doctor who's coming, his name, name is Damon Tweedy, and he's a psychiatrist. He teaches psychiatry down at Duke University. He's a black man, and he has written a book called Black Man in a White Coat. And he just, he's going to cover the fact that even in the medical profession, uh, there is discrimination. He has felt it. He will relate it, as he has in his book. Uh, and he will mention what happens when a black man goes into a patient's room and it's a white patient. What is the white patient thinking about the advice being given by that black doctor and vice versa? Uh, and other things that he experienced as a medical student and as a resident. The third session is going to be on inequality. We have a person whose name is Kathy Eden. She is a uh, professor at the Woodrow Wilson School in uh, at Princeton, and her specialty as a sociologist is, is the poor, the people in this country that are living on less than $2 a day. She's written articles, she's written books, she's, gonna, she's in the middle of another book with her husband. Uh, she's, she, one of her books is entitled Living on, two th on $2 a Day in America, and she's going to relate to it because she has spent enormous time with these people and understood how they feel and understood how they get an unequal treatment when it comes to health care and education and so much of the other things that we take for granted. And yet, that's part of the inequality that we, that we face. And she's an expert at that. The fourth session is on immigration. And it, uh, that can't be any more topical than right now with the uh, separation of children from parents is yet another d dimension. And that's going to be a gentleman called Steve Yale Lohr. And he's a, a professor at the Cornell Law School. And one of the foremost experts on immigration law in this country, and considered one of the 100 best in the world. He's written a lot of books. He's been on a lot of, of uh, television programs commenting on it. And he'll be really giving us a, a fresh look at, at all of the legal underpinnings and cases coming up as well that are currently headed to the Supreme Court. Uh, the fifth session. It's a wonderful session. It's good. Our speaker is Senator George Mitchell. Uh, Senator Mitchell, you'll recall, was majority leader in the Senate for a number of years. He's a senator from Maine. He also was the one asked to and successfully brokered the peace accord in Northern Ireland, which was considered to be an impossible process. But he did, for which he was awarded the Presidential Medal of Freedom and nominated for the Nobel Prize. What he's going to do is to say, in his talk, our divided country, can our divided country still be a leader in the world? Or, said differently, are the divisions that we have within our own country uh, things that are, gonna, are already tearing us apart from our world leadership? And he'll get into things like the, uh, us leaving the Paris Climate Accord, um, us leaving the Iran nuclear deal us leaving the Trans-Pacific Trade Pact, and whether these are just signs of, of us as a divided country not taking on the uh, uh, mantle of leadership that we should. The sixth and final speaker is Susan Denser. 
Susan has been chair of the board of trustees of Dartmouth. She's been in the healthcare industry. She was for 10 years the healthcare correspondent and commentator on PBS News with Jim Lair, and is considered a foremost expert in healthcare. And she will frame some of the issues that we're facing and also frame some of the inequality that exists and what we need to do to frame it, uh, to, to solve it. So in general, these issues are related in different ways, and we hope that out of the some of the six sessions, people will get a better picture of the domestic challenges that we face and the impact if we don't solve them. Our sessions, uh, as I said before, go from 9 to 11.30, and the standard format is that our speaker speaks for close to an hour, 50 minutes to an hour, and then we take a coffee break, and during the coffee break, people from the audience write questions that they would like to have addressed by the speaker on cards. They bring them up to, to the session moderator, and during that half hour coffee break, uh, getting the questions in order, and then come back for another 45 minutes to an hour to uh, ask these questions. One of the reasons we do it this way is because we don't get people standing up and making speeches <laughs> or going on and rambling on for a long time. And it, it makes for a very uh, smooth format, and we're able to get at um, a lot of the questions on people's mind. It's interesting to see. Uh, there'll be 10 or 15 questions on the same issue, and then there'll be some others at this, but you can see where the, where the audience is really coming from. Pete, does it matter uh, if somebody can only go to three of the uh, programs? Are they going to uh, miss the thread of the, of the season? Or I, would, I would say not, because as John pointed out, we have separate distinct topics each each time. So if you miss the one on racism, it's not going to really uh, impact you if you, your next one is the one on, on inequality. And John, uh, there, there were many topics brought up uh, this summer. Um, what were some of the competing ones that we might revisit another time? Well, we, uh, I'm trying to remember because I remember <laughs> I had about 30 different subtopics under uh, problems we have at home and basically these six subjects I think in a, in a broad sense covered th th those aspects. I mean I might have had one police brutality and profiling of black Americans. Well that's a part of racism and others had other aspects of, of that particular issue. So we really had pretty quickly, in fact this was the first time we've reached agreement so quickly as a committee on the broad subjects and we could then spend our time on coming up with ideas for speakers and ideas for the sequence. I have to admit that we come up with an ideal sequence sometimes and it's impossible because if a speaker is only available on one date, that's the date you booked them for. So we were going to have Senator Mitchell be the final speaker but he could only do it on session five. We said you're on for session five. <laughs> I would also add that in our audience last year um, we got 600 and in one session over 700 people in Spalding Auditorium. So it's a very popular series for the broader community and we start getting in September a lot of people who know Pete and me and, and say, okay, tell me, what's the series going to be next summer? And, you know, they're just eager to, to understand it and plan for it and, and make sure it's, if it's on Thursdays they don't book a lot of other plans for Thursdays in the summer. Is, uh, uh, is there any way that a person can, uh, who has to miss a couple of the sessions can access the material? Well, yeah, there's, uh, we, uh, CATV makes videos which, are, which can be purchased, so if you miss a session you can watch it that way, and it's, it's a wonderful way to make up for a sudden problem, a sudden illness, or, or what might it be, or you can just, you had just wanted to hear the, the thing again. And we had one last year, William Perry, the former Secretary of Defense, and I know people who were so mesmerized by his talk and his presentation that they then wanted to get the video because they wanted to show it to others in their family and other friends who hadn't been there. They just said, you've got to see this to believe it. And that was wonderful. So you can do that. And it, these, these topics are obviously ones that are 
uh, changing on an almost weekly basis. Uh, take, for instance, immigration uh, uh, in just this week and the and the past. Um, uh, how do we deal with with these minute to minute changes? <laughs> well, the good thing is we don't have to worry about that. We let the speakers worry about that, <laughs> and I'm sure they do because, as you point out, things are changing daily. These are such hot subjects and emotional subjects. I mean, immigration back in September when we decided it would be a section, a session in the in the uh, series. And we said, oh my gosh, where will we be in solving immigration law? Will we have already reached an accord? Will the parties have come together? We didn't know. Well, we're only now four weeks or less from the start of the summer lecture series, and immigration is front and center as an issue, and it hasn't been resolved. So these subjects have a way of, when you're talking, those kind of subjects, a way of, of having legs and continued interest. They don't just go away, even if you have a a vote on the Affordable Care Act, it does not mean that everyone says, okay, we're done, we'll go on to the next aspect of health care. They're still there. <laughs> and back, in, back in September, we, we thought the big issues with, with immigration was dreamers yeah. and chain... Uh, the wall. The, yeah. So, and now it's the separation of children yeah. from the family. So <laughs> maybe something else will, will rise up uh, before our speaker gets here. Yeah, I think so. There's another feature of our summer lecture series that this is be the second year we've done it now, which is we've teamed up with uh, Dartmouth Films, uh, who, as most people know, uh, have a whole series of films throughout the year. But we've worked with them to arrange either documentaries or actually fiction uh, stories that relate to one of our topics. And again, this year we're having three, um, three movies on, they're on Tuesday nights before the Thursday uh, lecture, and the, the film on a Tuesday relates to the topic that's, that's going to be talked about two days later. Sort of sets the stage for it in a very yeah. good way. The other new thing that we've been implementing is that we're live streaming these, these lectures to other Osher institutes. Uh, in this case, this summer, we're going to do two, University of Vermont, and Granite State University in, in uh, Manchester and other cities. Uh, and that way they can invite their members to come to their facility, a room with wherever they are, and watch the speaker watch and, and be able to submit questions by email that we then can include in the questions we get from our own audience. And so it's a way of expanding this. And our dream down the road is involving a lot more Osher Institutes so that the impact of this and the discussion about these issues has a wider audience and a, a, a bigger effect. It's clearly, uh, there, there is, uh, uh, th these are not East Coast problems. This is a national, yeah. uh, these are areas of national concern. Um, how, how does one, uh, 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 one might ask, uh, are, are there concerns about it, these sessions being overly political one way or another? Well, I'm, I, we've said in the committee, and I've reiterated uh, the fact that um, I know within the audience we're going to get some criticism. I'm prepared for it. I've prepared others to accept it. Because no matter how you treat a subject like racism, you've got people on this, the wide spectrum of emotion. And no matter what the speaker who we've selected, trying to get speakers who are not far to the left or far to the right, get speakers to give a, a, a broad view of whatever they're talking about. There will be people in the audience who will probably don't think they've covered it strongly enough or were too strong because it didn't agree with their feelings. So, we, th but this is why we pick the subjects. We're trying to ask people to think through an issue with the help of a, of a, a renowned speaker and to think through it and, and begin to have that conversation. So we're not going to be talking to the, to the uh, choir and, and have everybody say, oh, that's just great. I agree with everything the speaker said. We're going to get some, some give, give back, and I'm sure we're going to have a few letters that will come to us and all that. And I'd be pleased to get them, because I think that means we've somehow been able to convey a message through our speakers that has gotten some people to think further about the subject. 
Pete, uh, this has been going on for a long time. Uh, if I remember right, uh, it was uh, David Bisno and, and Joe Tofel who, who put together the first one, and that was, uh, I think, before we moved back to the Upper Valley in 95. Yeah, well, 19, well 1998 was the, was was the, the first. first year. Yes. Yeah, uh, David Bisno ran it. It was his idea to start it, I believe, and he did it for a number of years, and then uh, Bruce McDonald took it over, and he ran it for 10 years, and then we had some um, uh, illness problems and could not do it. And uh, John and I said, it's going to take two people to replace <laughs> these guys, because it was, you know, it's a fair amount of, of work, so it's been great having uh, two of us take the lead on this, and it's worked well. I am always impressed uh, at the quality of the speakers that, that we seem to attract. Uh, I think the college deserves a lot of credit for being a magnet uh, for the level of speakers we have. Uh, do you want to talk a little bit about honoraria? But yeah, I, I just want to say, I think being associated with Dartmouth gives us a lot of credibility when we go out to talk to uh, potential speakers. Um, that's one thing. So. You can talk about the honorarians. Uh, well, John. we have a budget for our entire series, and that we have also have sponsors, I should say, for our series too. Wonderful companies that either sponsor an individual session or the entire series, um, and we depend on that to help our to help us in the final financial uh, effect. Uh, but we um, we in the budget we have a budget for honoraria. and it, it's one of those things that is set without knowing at all who we're going to be able to attract and under what terms that they will come to speak. One thing we do as a group is we start at the very top in terms of a speaker to approach. Why not? Because if you don't, you don't get a George Mitchell, you get somebody down the line to start with George. Um, and so for racism, we started with Michelle and Barack Obama. <laughs> and I've dealt with their foundation uh, when they could not do it. But you start there. Now, you then get to some speaker uh, possibilities on these sessions who, who either through a speaker's bureau or sometimes themselves, put forth a very large honorarium request. And we just can't do it. And I'll either counter with something we can do, or I'll just say, I'm sorry, but it's just out of our element. Then there are people like uh, William Perry last year who former Secretary of Defense on the subject of nuclear proliferation, I'm passionate about, who did not want an honorarium at all. He wanted an ability, a pulpit in a wonderful college to, to talk about the threat of nuclear proliferation. And he just responded in saying, that's what I would like to do. It's a great place for me to go. And there's no request for an honorarium. So you get that, too, and that's just wonderful. So you try to balance your budget and your needs. And we, we came in last year under our honorarium budget. And we, this year, came in under our honorarium budget. And that's great. I don't bring up the word honorarium <laughs> when I'm recruiting. I wait until I hear, is there an honorarium? <laughs> but it's, it's, it's a, a factor in sometimes uh, not being able to get a speaker that you know, that you really would like uh, because of that. I might say that uh, for those of you who missed uh, last summer's session, uh, you can still uh, go on the CATV website uh, and listen to all but one lecture from last year's series, uh, including Bill Perry's. Uh, and it is uh, readily accessible on the website. It is well worth doing uh, 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 from a man who uh, was integral with the, the last del deliberations with North Korea uh, and with uh, Russia during the uh, breakup of the Soviet Union. Uh, so uh, this is a, a multifaceted man, as are all of the other speakers uh, from past years. Um, and uh, in closing, I'd like to uh, thank John and Pete for all of the labors that they have gone through putting together the uh, incredible number of pieces that make something like this so powerful. Uh, 
Uh, and also uh, a, a thank you to CATV8 for uh, a, a allowing uh, our uh, past lectures to have a home where people can access them. Thank you. <laughs>